Hello and welcome to the Tuesday, March 19th, 2019 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording, well, still from a yet-to-be-disclosed location, had one submission so far that got actually pretty close. Well, to start out with, today we got a new version of Putty, the favorite Windows SSH client. This uh, update fixes uh, four vulnerabilities, two of which actually could trigger buffer overflows if you're connecting to a malicious server. There's another kind of interesting vulnerability where if you are running PuTTY from a directory that also contains a malicious Windows help, so one of those CHM files, that could also lead to code execution. And as the update points out, this is, for example, very possible if you are running PuTTY directly from the download folder from your browser. Also interesting about this, uh, the vulnerabilities were disclosed via Hacker One. The European Union actually started a bug bounty program a while ago. I think I mentioned it and funds essentially the Hacker One part of this disclosure. So even though Putty is free and open source software, you can still get a bug bounty if you're finding vulnerabilities in it. Well, second uh, vulnerability we have is actually initially sounded like nothing all that special vulnerabilities in wireless keyboards. We have seen them a lot where essentially there's no encryption being used or if the encryption is just a simple XOR. So it was a little bit surprising to find a vulnerability in the Fujitsu keyboard that actually uses AES to encrypt keystrokes. The problem here is not the usual sort of eavesdropping attack, but instead a key injection attack. The problem is not with the keyboard, but with the USB receiver that comes with the keyboard. This receiver will not just accept encrypted keystrokes from the authentic keyboard, but if someone manages to create an unencrypted keystroke signal, that's accepted as well. So really the encryption is only optional. And while the keyboard seems to implement it correctly, anybody else could just send plain text. It looks like digital signatures are still causing problems for anti-malware detection. Malware Hunter team is reporting that they came across a recent copy of Locker Goga, which is uh, ransomware. And while they thought it should actually be pretty easy to detect, it wasn't like encrypted or packed in any special ways, it still didn't get detected by any of the engines in virus Total. Apparently the problem was that this particular sample actually did come with a proper code signature. Of course, all of this proves is that some developer who at some point obtained one of those certificates signed the malware. Well, that was sufficient for many antivirus engines to actually ignore it. Once this made Twitter and uh, was uh, highly retweeted, of course, antivirus engines caught up. And by now, there is pretty good detection of uh, this particular malware strain. Uh, malware Hunter team via Twitter did nicely sort of document how quickly antivirus engines did add signatures for this particular sample. And if you're still running the 14.04 version of Ubuntu, it's time to upgrade. This is the long-term support version of Ubuntu, but well, 14.04 means that it was released in April of 2014. So just about five years ago and end of April support will this be discontinued for this version of Ubuntu. Companies are able to sign up for a commercial support contract which will buy you another five years. If you do upgrade, you should first upgrade to 1604 and from there to 1804. And once you are at 1804, then of course you have until April of 2023. 
And Mirais, the malware that just uh, keeps on giving the latest version found by Palo Alto Networks Unit 42 includes 27 different exploits. We have uh, seen in the past, for example, Apache struts exploits being added to Mirai. This latest version does include exploits for wireless presentation systems and smart TVs from LG. Also, the list of passwords uh, being added to Mirai's brute force engine keeps getting longer as well. Not quite sure how fair it is to still call what's out there now Mirai, but since it's still based on the originally released code for Mirai, well, yes, it is essentially just the original code with more exploits being added to it. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow.